That's right. Yeah, thank you for applause. Um, today I'm going to talk about Vagrant and how you can use it to boost your development if you're developed before or with WordPress. But first things first, who I am? I, I'm Hans Helge Bürger. I'm a German guy. Probably you hear that. I'm from Berlin. Or actually, I'm recently moved to Berlin. I'm doing my masters there, and I'm doing my masters in data science and machine learning stuff. So all the fancy, fancy stuff you know about. <laughs> um, besides uni, I do some freelancing for WordPress development. I'm working for German-based um, WordPress agency called Impsight. And I'm also an active member of the German WordPress community. So let's get started. What am I talking about? I'm talking about a local development with Vagrant. But first, first, I need to define some things. So actually, what is a local development? Um, local development is actually the thing that you have an environment with an uh, environment you're developing with. For example, you have a machine and your WordPress site is running on. You can open PHP files, CSS, JavaScript, and so on, and start coding. If you do this on a live machine, that is actually a bad idea. Um, the better idea is to do it on your local machine, so on your laptop, on your desktop PC. Um, because if, or I would say, if you do it on a remote machine, on a client side, on a live server in the internet, it is really bad. Many, many bad things can happen, and they will happen sometime. So actually, why is it a bad idea? So why do I need a local environment? That's the question. The local environment um, has some benefits. So for example, if you're uh, on the train or on the plane, you can work offline. This is a really great benefit in case you're doing a, you're a digital nomad and you're traveling a lot, you can work from anywhere. Because all your files, all your server, everything you need is on your machine. Secondly, it is really fast because you don't need a connection to the internet. So the time, the latency, and the requests are gone to the internet. This will not happen. You only request your local machine. And the local machine is fast. Um, if you're, I, I already said it, that developing on a live server is bad because if you develop on a live server, and I know every developer says he's an expert and he knows what he does, but come on, everybody, we are humans and everybody makes mistakes. So at some point, you will break the client's site and the client will call you and say, um, that my site is gone, what did you do? I don't pay you. And you can actually, or you don't want to do, uh, happen this. So if you're developing locally, you can all experiments. You can create new branches on your Git. You can work on new features, which are experimentally. You can debug. You can um, print out logs and everything. So all the information you, as, you need for as a developer are now available. This is quite nice. So if you want to, or if you decided to move to a local development, the question is, how can I use it, actually? And there are different types or different ways how you can actually create your local environment. I just want to show some, because obviously I am focusing on Vagrant today. But maybe you attended um, the other presentation earlier, where the guy from WP Engine mentioned it. Oh, he is sitting there front. And he mentioned MAMP Pro, and MAMP Pro is a software for Mac. And I personally really like it. It's a one-click solution. You download the software, you say, I want a server with that domain. And it instantly creates it. It's nice, it's, it works, but it has some flaws. So if you're on other machines, for example, on Linux or on Windows, there also exist WAMP server, which is kind of the same like MAMP, or you can use SAMP. But 
I prefer using Vagrant, and Vagrant combines with VirtualBox, actually. So what is Vagrant? Vagrant says on its side it, it's a, it creates a configurable, lightweight, reproducible, and portable development environment. So what does that mean? Vagrant, um, Vagrant combines with VirtualBox. If you're not familiar with VirtualBox, that's a software you can create your virtual machines. A virtual machine is a kind of a new, totally new system, like if you're running on Mac, Mac is a machine. If you're running on Windows, Windows is a machine. Everything is a machine in some kind. And you can create a new machine on your system. So it's totally new. It has its own properties. You can configure it your way you want. And Vagrant exploits this idea of virtual box and does that automatically for your way. So it will automatically create some nice uh, machines with predefined um, packages and you can just start working on it. So automation is one thing, why Vagrant is nice. Another thing is it uh, lives on your local machine, so not on your live system. It, you can do provisioning, that means you, pre, you predefine several steps, for example, hey, if I install this new machine, I want to have an Apache server, and I need WordPress, and I need uh, my new MySQL database, and of course I need some fancy NoSQL database, all this stuff. You predefine that, and if you run the new uh, machine, all this stuff is included already. And that is pretty nice, because if you predefine this in a set, not in the machine, in a set, you can um, share this information with your colleagues, with the world of the internet, and everybody who's working with your configuration actually works with your configuration and nothing else. That has the benefits if you're, for example, in an agency, in a large team, and your client is running uh, his probably his own service on a Linux system and has some special configurations because we have uh, different firewalls, we have only open few ports, so all the specific stuff. You can simulate that machine on your local um, laptop, and if you develop, you're actually developing with a simulated machine, and if you find now flaws or if you find some issues, bugs on your machine, these, mach uh, these bugs would actually appear on your client's side. Now you can fix it locally, and nobody will ever know you experienced this bug. So if you installed VirtualBox with one piece of software and you install Vagrant, the other piece of software, you're ready to go and to do some awesome stuff. Vagrant is a command line tool. If you're not familiar with command line, you will shortly see what I mean. But it's actually quite nice and easy configurable. But firstly, I will introduce you to some of the commands, the most, I think, most important, most useful commands to get you up and running. Of course, Vagrant init. Vagrant init is the hello world to Vagrant. It will simply create your new Vagrant file. Vagrant files is a simple Ruby-like Ruby text file with all the predefined things you want to do. If you have this Vagrant file, you're actually uh, set to go. If you don't want to do any fancy stuff, you're set to go, and you can start Vagrant up, or you can say Vagrant halt. These are the most used commands in my development workflow, because they, these commands start the machine, and the other one shuts down the machine. So if you start, for example, if you type Vagrant up, this is a sample snippet, output uh, the console will give you. It will just state some information about um, what the machine actually does, what data is loaded, which ports are connected, and all the information you actually need. The next command is vagrant status. This is a useful command just for checking if your machine is running. Sometimes your 
might be confused if, this, if the machine is running and you're trying to access the web page and it's not loading and you're wondering why is it not loading? Probably your machine is off. That's all, everything. So quickly, vagrant status, show, oh, it's powered off. Maybe I should run vagrant up. If you do some provisioning, so provisioning, I already said it, you can predefine some packages, you can list all the details for your machine, the configurations, and you can use the um, simple shell scripts, this is supported, but you also can use Chef or Puppet if you're familiar with that. These are automation tools and they're quite easy to read, easier to configure. If you want to do that, you can do this. Uh, but also Docker or Ansible are supported. So if you change some things in your configuration, you have to run vagrant provision and the new changes are applied. If your machine is running, you can set vagrant SSH. This is actually a useful command. And I mean useful because it gives you the full access to the machine. If you're familiar with, familiar with SSH, that means you're logging into your remote machine. So you can actually work from your keyboard, uh, but actually you're executing all the commands on the remote machine. In that case, the remote machine lives on your laptop, but it thinks actually it is remote. So now you have root access, you have all the privileges you need, you can run everything you want and do whatever you want. So that is pretty nice. You can now install some stuff manually, you can update some stuff, you can restart services, all the stuff you need, you can do with Vagrant SSH. If you're, if you're finished with your work or if you really get sick of your machine, of course there's a destroy command, vagrant destroy. This is a nice command in my point of view because if you create your virtual machine and the virtual machine is quite heavy, quite big because it's a real system. So it uses a lot of space on your laptop. And if you do all the stuff and you did all the development for your client and the project is done, you simply say vagrant destroy and all traces, all traces of this machine are gone and you have free space for a next project. This is pretty nice because you don't cluster your own computer. And last but not least, the most useful command of vagrant, vagrant help. Everything is documented, so if you're stuck, just type vagrant help and all the man pages are shown up. If you, if you need more information, of course, there is a documentation of vagrant, so don't panic, just type vagrant help. The other thing about, so this, we have on the one side, we have the vagrant commands. I already said there exists some kind of vagrant file. And that is the other thing I wanted to show you. I don't go into detail because that can be quite complex if you're, not, if you're just starting with Vagrant, but I want to show you some basics, what you can do with Vagrant. So this is a actually really um, Vagrant file. You can just copy that into your text file, call it Vagrant file without any extensions, just Vagrant file and you're ready to go. So let's look at some lines. The first line, actually, you see it's kind of Ruby mode and everything is packed in this Vagrant configure. And in that configure, you define all your, pre, uh, your, your details, your configuration for the machine. So the first line, the box, is I, uh, the most important line because here is the connection to, virt uh, to virtual box made. The box in Vagrant defines the machine. So Vagrant names the box, so a box is a machine, because it, everything you need is boxed into one package. You, say, you see it's Ubuntu slash trusty64, that means 
This Vagrant machine is actually running as a Ubuntu machine with the version Trusty and it's a 64-bit version. There exists kind of every machine you can think of. If you need another version of Ubuntu, it exists. If you need some other version of Linux, it exists. If you need some Windows files, they exist. Every box you can think of exists, and if they don't exist, you can build your own box. That is pretty useful in many cases. So, in this case, I choose a default Ubuntu version, and it works. So, let's continue. You see the network line, and this is a really neat feature, because if I have this machine running on my site locally, it runs independently. I don't have any kind of access to this machine by default. This is, this is not a bad thing, this is standard, such, so is Word, but you can, um, you can bind some ports so you can actually access your machine. Because if, if you think about your web page, your web page is running on a server, and your server is not accessible by default on, uh, over, for example, your explorer, but you can access it with your browser. And that means your server opens, or on your server, there are some ports open, and you can access via this port, via this door on your server, you can access your site to get some files. And this is what we are doing. We actually say, hey, if I, I have a guest port at 80, and I have a host port at 8080. These are standard ports, that means if I'm on my local laptop, on my MacBook now, and I go to my browser and I type the uh, URL to the, my browser and I append the 8080 port, this will be forwarded to the machine. And the machine might uh, run an Apache server or an NG, Nginx server, and all the requests are processed by the machine now. And that is handy, because now I can run a uh, you, you can run your server locally, you can run your database locally, and you can access a WordPress site. The next line, the network line also stated, is commented, but it is another useful feature if you're more familiar with network stuff. Because if you have a machine, you can actually assign um, static IP, IP addresses, and your machine is then available in your IP range. This is a nice feature because you can extend that to a wider range and then the machine is not only available on your laptop, but it might be available on your local network. So your colleague in the same Wi-Fi can access your vacant machine and see all the changes you did. This is useful. Another use case might be if you're a front-end developer, you can actually register your vagrant machine on your local network, and you can access this machine on your smartphone, on your tablet, and you can do all the re uh, response design stuff without need of some simulation, iPhone simulation or whatever on your MacBook. You can just do it on your device. That's nice. The next line, the sync folder, is a really powerful feature. And many, many boxes or many vagrant machines are using that feature. This synced folder feature means you have a folder on your host machine, on my laptop, and I have some folder on this remote, on this vagrant machine. And by default, these don't folder, don't sync. But vagrant uses a synced folder system, and you can um, bind these two folders, and everything what happens in these folders are totally synced. So I can actually work from my laptop, change some files in there, and everything is changed on this machine. So I don't need to SSH into the machine to change some files, to change some configs, or whatever. I can do it just from my machine. The last block, the provision block, just a quick example, is a provisioning block using shell commands, and this provisioning block is executed once if you start your machine for the first time, or it is executed next time if you do it with a vagrant provision command. So in this case, I just say 
update the apt-get uh, repository and install Apache server. That's everything I do in this case. Nothing fancy. So far, so good. But now I want to show you what I mean actually, how, it, how you can use it and how you can set up your system. So let's see, I have, I'm on my desktop in the terminal, let me hide this, and I'm quickly, I gen, uh, generate a new folder, dear, test, let's cd in, oops, and nothing is here, it's a clean folder. The, all, the only thing I need to do now is actually vagrant in it, and it generates the vagrant file. So let's see, I have a vagrant file, and I actually can see this vagrant file, and this is actually this kind of same vagrant file you saw earlier, but it is really good documented. So if, if you generate the new vagrant file, take a look at all the comments, and you have a basic understanding what you can do with Vagrant. This is really nice. The only thing I want to change, actually, is the box, because I don't want to use the base box. This is a sample um, default box. But I want to use Ubuntu Trusty 64. This is my Ubuntu. Ah, I mistyped. So, I defined that I want to use the Ubuntu machine now. If I now say vagrant up, this is the next command I want to execute. If I do this for the first time, vagrant will automatically download Ubuntu, sets everything up in VirtualBox, starts the machine, provisions the files, and I'm ready to go. And I actually want to do this. And if I didn't any, any mistakes, it won't take long because I already downloaded this box. This is a, also a nice feature of Vagrant. You only download the box once and you can reuse it for every new machine. So the box itself is not altered, but the configurations are adapted. And you see, it's doing some stuff here. It's setting the name of the VM. It will also do some port forwarding. You see here 22 is forward to 2222. That's actually for SSH. It will register the SSH address and so stuff. So now everything is done. And let's see, vagrant status. It's running. Good. Now I can access my site. Vagrant SSH. You can actually use the default SSH tool you're familiar with. Just simply use the um, IP address stated above, and it works, but this is a nice shortcut. And you see, now I'm logged in as the Vagrant user on my Vagrant Ubuntu Trusty 64 machine, and I have all the privileges. So. I have here my files, I'm in this directory as a vagrant user, and let's see what's in root. We have some files here in root, and now I can do whatever I want. I can update my apt-get repository, I install nginx, whatever you want you can now do. And this is pretty powerful, because you can install whatever you need. For example, in, for my old employer, I created a new box and we were working as um, with a Java tool. So I created a new box. I installed Java, the specific Java version we needed. I installed the software we needed, installed. I set up the database. I imported default sample data so the colleagues can um, quickly work. So if I firstly set up the machine, they have some sample data to work with. And after this, I, I packed the box. I boxed it, uploaded it to a distribution system, and now every, emplo every employee on this company can simply run Vagrant init that handle for this uh, personalized box, 
And if you say Vagrant up, the box is downloaded and everything is started up. And they can simply call the URL in their browser and they're ready to go. But you see, this box now is empty. We don't have installed Apache on this. We don't have WordPress installed. And if we do this now manually, it will take, take some time, actually. So actually, there's a better way for you as a WordPress developer. And that's actually the next thing I want to talk about. Varian, Vagrant, Vagrants. VVV is a nice vagrant environment. This is predefined by some nice guys. They are really experts in WordPress development. They are experts in some uh, machine development. And everything I just talked, they did for you. There exists a repository on, the, on GitHub. You can simply go to this repository. And you see all the files. You see some config files, database files, log files. You see the main vagrant file, and you just clone this uh, repository on your system, you run vagrant up, and everything is installed automatically. It's a dream. And let me tell you what is included. So if you download this, if you run the vagrant up command, there is not only WordPress installed. There are actually a lot of things installed. So it is optimized for WordPress, and that means it uses Nginx, not Apache. There exists an, uh, a fork of that repository using Apache. So this one, the original VVV, is using Nginx, MySQL, double, uh, uh, WordPress, the WPCLI. It, uses, it installs Composer, Git, SVN, PHP unit. It sets up four different WordPress sites for you automatically, a default WordPress site. Uh, you can simply use for developing or blogging, whatever, on your local machine. There's a develop WordPress site with some more developer parts. So it really downloads the developer branch of WordPress, not the stable one. There is a trunk WordPress site, so really the really bare-bone WordPress for core development, and there's the build WordPress site with all the CRUD files if you're doing WordPress core development. That's really useful. All the unit tests written for WordPress are downloaded and executable for you. And they are uh, using custom domains, and they lock and use debugs by default in the system. That's really nice. VVV is really useful in itself. I use it myself a lot. I will show you quickly what it's done. But one thing I need to mention, and I think this is a really useful feature or a really useful tool, and that is called Variable VVV, or it's a simple command line tool which uh, helps you, empowers you to uh, boost your actually WordPress development. And I don't want to show some slides. Let me show what it can do. So I'm actually here on my uh, VVV folder, and it has some more files now. We see this is all the, mark the readme files. There's a config file, database, log provisioning, www. And these are actually the synced folders from your system. Just let's take a look. If I say config, we have some config files. Primarily, there are nginx config files, and I can change them, and they are changed on the server. I just need to restart nginx, and everything works. That's really nice. Also, for databases, for logs, and other stuff. But now, let's uh, see what is really installed. So, background status, I think it's running. Should. Wait, yep, it's running. So let's see if I open a browser, nice browser, and I navigate to local wordpress.dev. That's actually my site. And this is my value new installed WordPress version. I can now click through the setup. I can install it. I can do all the things I want to do. And this is pretty nice because it's running locally. 
But let's see if I, what can I do actually? So if I, I said four different WordPress sites are installed by default, but as a developer, I have more than four clients. I need more sites. I need a sign for client A, for client B, for client C to set, whatever. So how can I do this? And now this li nice little tool VV is coming into play, and I just simply say VV list, for example, and these are some sites I installed on my machine. So I have, a, for some project, a backup WP up restore module. I'm, I have my own site locally for developing. And you see at the far bottom, there is also some uh, default sites. So let's say I have a new client, for example. I need to develop for this WordCamp a new site. I want to start clean. The only thing I need to do is say create. And now some uh, stuff is asked. So what is the name actually? I say, for example, this is my test demo site. This is the default domain it will use, test-demo.dev. I can change that if I want, but no, it's fine. I can also say the specific WordPress version. So if I have a client and they don't want or don't cannot update to a newer WordPress version, you can actually use a, on, an older version um, to ensure that everything you develop works with that version. I leave that bank to have a new one. Install as multi-site? Mm, not yet. Um, I can actually clone the WP content folder. Many companies and agencies do that. So they have the content, WP content folder on some repository because everything for that client is included in that one folder. It's more convenient. But no, in this case, I don't want to do this. I could actually load a database into, I could remove default themes, I can add sample content, I can enable the debug logs, but this is a simple example, so yes, that's my site, and that's everything I need to do. Everything is done automatically. It will download WordPress, it will set up the config file, it will generate the database for you, it will load all your... Give me it will load the sample content, for example. It will uh, set up the admin user for your site. Everything is done automatically. I timed that earlier. It will take, on my machine, approximately 10 minutes. This is quite slow, because, but my machine is quite old and I'm really full, so it might be faster on your machine. So I will uh, terminate this and I will show I already did a site, probably you see this in the list, and if I navigate to this site, I just, okay, bad things can happen. <laughs> I actually just generated the site earlier, so I won't fix that now, but <laughs> trust me, actually it would generate the new site and I can simply uh, open that and everything works. Yeah, <laughs> presentation mode. <laughs> so, in the end, oh, maybe that was there. No, okay, whatever. So, in the end, if I, um, I actually could use this uh, VV tool to remove sites. So, I simply say remove and say demo, and it will delete all the files. So if I don't need the site anymore, I can simply save this and it will delete all the files from your www content folder. It will remove all the config files, the init files, it will remove the database and you're ready to go for a new project. This is really helpful. So this is not actually the only thing. No, this is actually Where's my presentation? So this is not the only thing I wanted to show you. So there are some more ex uh, stuff I want to show you. If you are just doing WordPress development, this is actually a nice tool set for you. They are in Vacant Vacants. You can use this VV tool to boost your environment. But if you do some stuff, if you 
if you're um, using Vagrant on your daily basis, there are some useful tools or useful packages you can actually um, download for server use, use cases. And for example, there's a really fairly new WordPress um, Vagrant box coming up. It's called Theme Juice. And this is actually kind of competitor to VVV. It's looks quite nice on my first side. I, didn't ha I don't have yet experience with it, so I cannot really talk about it. But uh, you should check it out. It's a nice site. It does some um, pre-configurations. Uh, it will set up the machine on your local network, so it's, it really focuses on WordPress front-end developers. So if you're, you, uh, if you're a WordPress front-end developer, check out Theme Juice and you have some neat tools on your hand for front-end development. There's also some nice tool called Vagrant Manager. If you're using Vagrant on a daily basis and you have a lot of machines, there is a neat tool, Vagrant Manager. It's fixed on your menu bar. It's available for Windows and for Mac. And you can quickly see which machine is running, which machine is off. I can do the up process, I can start it, I can hold it, I can destroy it, I can do the provisioning, everything done from the menu bar. This is pretty nice. I have installed it myself and it's useful to, for a quick view which machines are running. Vagrant has a lot of opportunities for, extensi uh, for plugins and extensibility. And uh, here, VVV, the Varian Vagrants Vagrants repository is using some plugins for doing some magic stuff. For example, the Vagrant host updater plugin is pretty useful. If you, are, if you want to access your site on your browser with um, the, your custom URL, I showed you the local WordPress.dev URL, this URL needs to be written in one file on your system. And the plugin can do this actually for you and everything is nice with a URL marked, and you don't, have, don't need to type in the IP address. Um, yeah, there's actually a long list uh, available on GitHub if you want to check out some other plugins. There's, there exists the site vagrantbox.es. This is a nice list of available boxes. So if you need some other box than Ubuntu, check out Vagrant Boxes and you will find a really, really long list of nice, useful Linux machines and other stuff. And last but not least, uh, VVV dashboards. There exist some um, third-party repositories and they simply tweak the front end for your VVV dashboard. The dashboard itself, by default, is pretty uh, basic with no CSS and everything. And few three guys I know of are just designing the site and you have a quick access to your site. So if you're not, if you, if you don't want to use, um, or if you want to use Vagrant Manager, this is the tool for your Vagrant machines, you can also use Vagrant Dashboard to see if your WordPress sites within your box are running or if there are some issues. This is also a re pretty nice feature. And there are so many other things about Vagrant I could actually talk, but everything you will you need to go or to boost your environment, you will find actually on my website. This is the URL. I, everything I talked about, every link I mentioned or every tool, I linked on this web page so you have a quick reference for it. And then you're ready to go and start developing like a pro. Thank you. Do Are there any questions? Yep. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Nope. I Everyone's see. eager. Audience of pros. No yeah, questions. they're all uh, eager to go home and try out Vagrant. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, then, thank you. If you have any questions, you might just come up.
I'm also tomorrow at the contributor day, so don't worry to ask any questions. Thank you. Yep.